I've often been asked, how do I come up with ideas for my games, for my campaigns? What are the sort of launch points that I will use to take off with my campaign, my adventure, my story? Maybe I'm at a bit of a lull, a creative block, if you will, where I'm planning for my session that's coming up tonight or something like this, and I can't come up with a cool idea. And one thing that today, today specifically, has me thinking through, and the point of this video is to give you a list of 20 days, 20 specific things on specific days that can spark, that can light the fire, that can provide the inspiration. See, today, today specifically, June 27th, is my birthday. Now, when you are older, your birthday oftentimes is not very different than any other day. It's kind of the same stuff, but there is a few things that happen. Now, each family, each culture is going to celebrate fam uh, birthdays differently, but in my particular case, on my birthday, my wife makes me breakfast. My kids give me hugs. They say happy birthday. I get texts and phone calls from people that maybe I haven't spoken to in a while. All simply because it's June 27th. I oftentimes will not get that on the 26th. I might get it on the 28th for those that forgot that it was my birthday. But for the most part, it is on the 27th of June. On that specific day that words are sent to me. Words of kindness, hugs, love sometimes money. It's my birthday that I can, it's the day that I can a little more comfortably, you know how, what is it? Better to ask for forgiveness than permission. It's the day that I can go out, go to the store and maybe buy something that I've had my eye on for a while. And if I do that on my birthday versus any other day, including Christmas, if I do that on my birthday, I will generally avoid argument with my loved ones. So the significance of a birthday, right? It, it, it's just one day. Yes, it's the day that you were born, right? Long, long time ago in my case. But it really got me thinking of how just a single day can spark so much difference, right? It, it sort of can be so different than yesterday and so different than tomorrow. So what I have is I'm going to pop up this list right here, right? Notice we have, it's a D20 list. I'll go ahead and just leave it up on screen this whole time here, but I'll also put a little PDF in the bottom that you can download if you want to just get this little list, right? This is just a list that I made up just kind of off the cuff, off the fly very quickly. You notice there's 20 of them. So you can all simply roll a D20 and run off of that or choose whatever sounds best. But I want to run through them very quickly and just sort of show you how there's so much fuel, so much power for your games as a dungeon master, whether you're creating your own world, whether you're creating some distinction between one culture and another culture, you want to say that the people in the North are very different than the people in the South. How are they different? Things like this, how they work through and weave through and celebrate or don't celebrate a certain day, a day that's kind of global, right? A, a day that's marked on your calendar of your world, of your story, and how each group, each faction, each nation interprets that day and what occurs during that time, right? Notice the amount of gameplay that can come from just simply focusing on a single day. As I've been running D&D for so long, 40 years, one thing that I'm learning more and more that I don't do very well, that I need to pay more attention to is tracking the passage of time, like actually recording and writing down what day the game place or the, the session started, when they finished, did they finish in late in the evening, like seven, eight o'clock at night or like two in the morning? And what's the difference is, are, are things darker? Are the more horrible nightmarish monsters out after midnight versus when the sun just you know sets but most importantly why would you not track the passage of time when you have the mention of things like seasons right winter is coming right the the, the way doors and and windows are boarded up and things are sheltered and there's less hospitality in the north during the winter because that's when everything is work 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 and just really put your nose to the grindstone and there's no time for party and celebration because these three months is the period of time when people starve you know what i mean so you have to definitely track these these various times because that's what makes i strongly believe time 
And working and weaving through the calendar is what makes your world the most living, breathing place possible by simply focusing on that. So let's go through these 20 and what do I mean by the significance of a day and how it can spark and inspire you. Number one, the day of invasion. Your world has some lore and story. And notice this can apply in established worlds. If you're running in Forgotten Realms, but you just need some seeds of inspiration, something to springboard off of for tonight's session, think through one of these days. Roll a d20 and see what what pops up and think through how this might relate to a day that is mentioned in the Forgotten Realms book. But certainly if you're making your own world, your own one shot or adventure, these days can definitely really be a a boon and a benefit to you because you're making up your own stuff here, right? But what is the Day of Invasion? The Day of Invasion is a, it's not so much a day of remembrance as it is a day that everyone talks about the demonic invasion that happened X time ago, okay? Whether it was a thousand years ago, whether it was yesterday. How do the cultures, the nations, the people that your PCs interact with, what is different if your PCs walk into a town on the day of invasion versus the day after or the day before? Kind of like I talked about with my birthday, right? What makes today for me different, slightly different than yesterday or tomorrow? See, when you walk into a town on the day of invasion, there's in a certain area, there's more celebration. There are fire breathers and people juggling sticks, you know, torches. There's fire everywhere, representative of the fire and the flame that was brought by the infernal and hellish forces during the day of invasion. Maybe in a very religious nation, in a very religious town, village, city, whatever it may be, there's chants, there's a lot of prayer. Maybe there's another place where things are boarded up. Right? There's some northern village that was directly influenced a hundred years ago by the invasion of the demons. So you're not getting into the front gates without proper, you know, identification or something like this. Tieflings will never make it into the northern towns on the day of invasion. But if they show up yesterday or tomorrow, they might. So notice how just tracking the day of invasion in your world can influence the social, the exploration, and the combat areas of of adventuring and gameplay that 5e offers. Next, the day of mourning, the day of remembrance, a day of just what it sounds like, remembering those that have died, right? Whether it's PCs, maybe that's a day where you ask your players to role play some stuff based on a character that previously died. You have, and then think of how that, you know, how that affects the actual player who's now playing a new character because their character died three sessions ago. Track that day in your world, not real lifetime. This is the day that the fireball killed the rogue because he failed the dex check for the first time. And he doesn't have evasion or whatever the one is, right? Where, what is it? Save for none, fail for half. This is the day that the rogue thought he discovered the trap on the door, but he didn't. And the trap went off and he sacrificed himself or whatever, right? Mark that day. And then if you track the passage of time and you kind of gloss over worldly travel where the PCs, you know, fly across the, you know, the coast for 61 days and you track that and your gameplay actually covers a full year. When you come back to that year, what was the day that PC died and play into that? Number three, the day of harvest. Maybe that's just a day where all of the food in your player's handbook is cheaper because in certain areas, of course, because it's more readily available. It's the god of harvest, the god of springs and life and nature, goddess, whoever it may be. You know, the rains have poured down for the last seven days. And on the day of harvest, that's when all the halflings come out of the ground or wherever they come from, their hobbit holes. And, you know, they pluck all of the vegetables and fruit. And there's just an abundance. There's feasts and food everywhere. Because you'll notice that it's very easy to have another day in here where it's just famine. Okay? So maybe that's the day of harvest, the day of swarms. Maybe all the little chittering creatures, the little monsters, goblins, and maybe even smaller like baby ink eggs and rats or, or giant ants, you know, insects that are D&D fantasy, right? So they're larger than life, but they're still little swarms of things, right? Things that fit. I mean, the swarm is a template in the monster manual, right? Things that fit within the thousands. And they just 
like a locust, right? They just infest and destroy everything. And maybe they all come from the blight lands in the east. And people know when those clouds of black move in, that's not, you know, just dark skies. That's a locust swarm, right? Maybe it signals something prophetic. You know, it signals some sort of a doom coming. But you have the day of swarms. That's the day that maybe all your harvest, all your crops, all your livestock, everything that's living needs to be brought inside. Okay? The day of frost. Bear with me. Okay, I'm sorry. I had to refresh. You know, I didn't mention this. One of the cool things about my birthday is I have a client that every birthday gives me a box of C's candy specifically when you ask because i know you're gonna ask what do i have what's here i don't get the variety i just ask for marzipan this is like the almond paste thing so it's a little too sweet though to mix with my coffee but you have to excuse my eating but it's my channel i don't care the day of frost number five I guess is that what it is? So, maybe in your world, you have one of the big giants. Actually, it's funny. I have a cool picture of giants up above hill giant, fire giant, stone, frost, cloud, storm. Six giant types. The main giant types, right? Maybe in your world, you've got the six main giant types, and they're not present in your world, but they always arrive on the day. The day of fire, the day of frost, the day of clouds, the day of storms, okay? And on this day, the day of frost, that's when the, fr the frost giants infest the world. I don't want to say they're swarm level because that would be a major threat. You don't want your, fire, your frost giants to be in numbers equivalent to insects, right? That's a problem. But if the PCs are hunting frost giants and they want to kill frost giants and they want some legendary axe of frost... And they need to wait to take it from the hands, from the clutches of the Frost Giant King. You need to wait for the Day of Frost before the Frost Giants are actually in the world. But notice how just that sparks a world now that I'm creating simply based on this idea that all the giants, all the giant types are locked behind gates. They're kind of kept in another intermediary plane. And those veils, those doors don't open until those specific days. The day of the thin veil. This was coincidence in that I wrote this after this, but the day of the thin veil is there is a veil between your world. And again, it doesn't matter if it's Eberron or Ravnica or Greyhawk or Forgotten Realms. You're playing D&D, guys. I mean, I'll make a video on this. Make shit up. I don't care if the books... Here's a, here's a book on Ravnica. You want to run Ravnica. It's this big. Ravnica is more than what fits within cover to cover. Ravnica is whatever the hell you make it. You don't need the approval of a Tasha spell called like Dream of the Blue Veil, I think it is. It's a bard spell, high level, 7th or 8th, that allows you, as long as you have some item, artifact, object from the world you're trying to go to, that allows you to teleport from the current world you're in to another world, okay? But you can create the Thin Veil in your world. And what does that mean? It's a day known as the day of the thin veil where the veil between your world and that world, whatever that world is, whether it's Feywild, Shadowfell, Abyss, Nine Hells, okay? Or it's just some other Eberron, Ravnica, Greyhawk, whatever it may be. The veil is thinner. And on that day, Druids are out. Wizards are out. Right? People that study, the scholars that study planar travel. Maybe you see weird. We, you know, that's when you see nymphs and dryads and brownies and fey folk. Like, oh, this is the day of the thin veil. Clearly, the guys of the fey wild are coming through, and I don't know what they're doing in this world. You see some sort of <laughs> Eberron esque flying ship coming in. That is not normally in your world, but it's only here today and it's gone today. It's gone at midnight tonight because it came from another world, right? I'm thinking of Shadow and Bone, the Netflix show, okay? The Day of Unsealing. Maybe that's sort of like, rather than the veil between worlds, like imagine all these doors, these ancient seals lock tomes. So there's certain books that the wizards and scholars can't open, right? There's doors to dungeons, to ancient crypts that are just sealed. 
But on the day of unsealing, <laughs> all those things open up. They're more accessible. Now the DC goes from a DC 35 open lock to a DC 25. Now rogues potentially might be able to open the doors to the ancient crypts, but only on that day. The day of the wildlands. Things are wild. All the cities, the walls, you know, like you can see leading up to it for about a month, they're building another six feet of wooden, you know, wall or parapets or they're gathering, you know, the dwarf. You're noticing the trails everywhere around the world, anywhere near any settlement, especially a larger settlement like a, a town or a city. The trails are just littered with caravans of dwarven sentries and merchants transporting ore and stone where the hell are all these dwarves going why are the mines 24 hours a day for the month prior to the day of wildlands why are the mines so active just ch -ch -ch. the sounds of you know candlelight coming from these mines the dwarves are overworked right why because every major nation every major settlement uh, city and town is asking for more stone for more resources so that they can build their walls about three, four feet higher, only on those days. And then maybe they'll leave them up, but that is now the catalyst for how that wall became 30 feet. This city was, or this town was established 10 years ago. And every year they built a three foot wall. And it, I think that's 30 feet. And it's just stacked upon each other. And why are these cities and towns building these walls? Because on the day of wildlands, the wilds take over. You, if you're a humanoid type, based, not humanoid, but a player character, if you will, right? Something in the races. You want to be inside the cities. You want to be inside of those walls. Because the things of the wild, like the monsters, everything comes out of their dens. Everything gets out of hibernation. Day of Wildlands. Day of Lost and Forgotten. Can be a day that PCs search for artifacts, for items. Could be a day that people, people are searching for lost children. Lost family members, an adventurer that went into a dungeon and they never found him. That's a day where numerous expeditions are made to go search for those lost people. Things that are forgotten, forgotten lore, forgotten knowledge. It's a day that combined the two. The previously, the day of unsealing, unsealed one of the doors in an ancient library in a wizard's tower or a wizard school. And during the day of the lost and forgotten, that's the only day that the wizards, the, the, the students of that wizard school are allowed to rent out or pull out those li those books from the, the library of the forgotten, right? Ancient knowledge. That's when maybe some new magic might be discovered, whatever it may be. The Day of Souls. There's ghosts everywhere this day. Well, that's the day that everybody or most people in the world get a lot older if you're going to use some of the old school I think it's in 5th edition as well. Ghosts, right? You fail that saving through, you age by X amount of years. Day of the World God. Well, that's a day that you're clearly low on the totem pole. It's obvious that everyone in this world is drops down a rank because the God arrives. And whatever the hell the God wants to do, and depending on which God you have, represent. You know, you can have, if you have 13 gods in your world, you can have 13 of these days. All specific to one of the gods. Or randomize it. You have 12 gods in your world, roll a d12, and on this day, that god arrives. What happens if it's Bane, Siric, and it's not Tyr or Torm? Things can change on that day. Day of the walk. Maybe people kind of t attach to like the day of mourning, the day of remembrance, the day of lost and forgotten, but they walk. You know, they just leave where are they? wanderlust, exploration. Rangers, barbarians, those that just travel the world. They're not happy with just being confined to a city. But that this is a day that everyone just takes off for a while and just goes walk about, if you would, right? And they just take off and they just contemplate. You know, they're more contemplative. They're searching for something and they just leave for a while. But you'll notice a lot of the villages, the towns are empty. If your PCs are requiring information and hospitality, that's the wrong day to go in. Wait till tomorrow. But now you've given yourself some room to say, that, you guys, you guys are going to actually stay in the wilds tonight and you're going to camp out. You give a chance for random encounters. But it justifies it because now you can say, 
okay, who's going to take watch? There's really nothing in the city. There's nowhere to stay. Everything is locked up. It's the day of the walk. They're gone. Everyone's gone. They're on a pilgrimage or something like this. Wait till tomorrow. And it kind of starts to make sense. The day of ruin. That's a real reason why everyone shutters all their doors and locks their windows. And all of the good aligned folk hide and shelter up, you know. Oklahoma tornado shelter style, right? Just stay under until someone knocks and says it's clear to come out. On the day of ruin, the most ruinous monsters and creatures and horrible things walk the land and destroy all. But that can also be the day that the champions are out. Unless you've got the chops to defend against the, the darkest and biggest evils of the world, get inside, right? You're either the guys that are the women, children, or whoever it was that weren't able to take up arms and fight in Helm's Deep, you're either going to sit down there and, and hide in Helm's Deep or you're going to be out there on the front lines with Aragorn and Legolas and King Theoden and whatnot, right? The day of pie. I don't know, halfling day. A day of food. Again, play into the food, aristocratic meals and stuff like that. It's just a day of celebration. I mean, come on. If there was a day of pie, just like there is a donut day and, you know... What influence does that have in your world? It's just a little more chill, a little more fun. Again, coincidental that I wrote it directly after the Day of Ruin, but you get it. Don't have these days all follow up like that, but, you know, what does the Day of Pi mean? The Day of Legions. All you hear is <laughs> marching troops, soldiers, armies, people walking, or, or entire militia walking everywhere. We're not talking about town guard. No, like things, people are on the march. Are they going to war? I don't know. But maybe that's just a day that, you know, signifies something. Signifies a specific battle in your history, a specific war. The Day of Legions are the days that in the military, that's when sergeants are, you know, graduate up to the next rank. That's when officers get their lapels or, or, or their labels pinned on them. And, you know, that's when the commander... The Lord of an army becomes the general of the North, right? That's a significant day in military or something like this. The day of contracts. Maybe this is a day that all the assassins and those sort of nefarious guilds are out. Finishing those contracts, finishing those deals. It's a day that you see a lot of tables in taverns and bars and a lot of handshakes and a lot of gold slid across the table, right? Things are finished. Things are Contracts are signed. Contracts are fulfilled. Interesting day for the roguish element in your game, or in your group. A day of darkness. You can use this literally. Sun doesn't rise this day. Just doesn't. The god of darkness keeps his shroud over the world. What monsters come out? You know, anything with sunlight sensitivity loves this day. Vampires. Okay, very simple. Day of champions. Maybe that's a day where, you know, statues are finished. You know, the, the king has said, you have seven months to finish these statues. We want them lining the, the pathway leading to the giant cathedral, a la like Stormwind or something like that. Finish it on the Day of Champions. It needs to be finished. That's a day of prayer, a day that people kind of kneel and, you know, set flowers and trinkets and baubles and maybe a sword or something at the feet of this statue, remembering a, a champion. Maybe there is an actual champion. A retired soldier, you know, a veteran that is now, a, what is it, Forgotten Realms, right? He's a badass, but he's the innkeeper. Maybe that guy is remembered on that day. The Day of Kings kind of can be similar. Day of Royalty, Kings, Queens, Lords, Leaders. Maybe that's when the crown is transferred. I mean, think of how the seat of power, if you've got a son who's a 20-year-old asshole and his father who's really good, really nice, benevolent, but you have this almost tyrannical son, but for whatever reason, maybe there's a God influence, right? Even though the benevolent father is still fit to be king, on the day of kings, that crown transfers. But at least you know you only have to endure the asshole son for a year, because on the day of kings, that crown needs to transfer, right? So the, the, the father, the, the king, the first king, or whoever it is, needs to make sure that they have a good line of children underneath them. Right, But just think of how the political, socio-political landscape of your world changes if the crown changes every year. And finally, the day of prophecy. 
That's when all the hags, all the strange cracked hermits and wizards come out and, you know, boo, the chick from Princess Bride, right? But they're just prophesizing world doom and world ending this and this and that changes. That's when you reveal a certain story to your players. That's where one of your PC's backgrounds now comes to light in the game on the day of prophecy. What does that mean, the doom and gloom of the world? You start un, sort of revealing the mysteries and secrets of the world only on the day of prophecy. So, it's my birthday. I'm going to enjoy, but that was the reason why. I just know that when I woke up, today is going to be a little bit different, in a good way, of course, hopefully, a little bit different than it was yesterday and that, than it will be tomorrow, but being that it's Sunday, the day after my birthday is back to work, right? So focus on some days. doesn't have to always be holidays and celebrations, just days. Use this list, make your own list, create a day, and when that, that day comes up in your world, think of its world-reaching effects. Thanks, everybody.